Hey, how you doing? Welcome back to Big Frog's 4x4. Sorry I'm a day late. Had some trouble finding the cords and the plugs and getting everything hooked up for the oven to bake the powder coat. But we're all ready and set. My 60 gallon air compressor has a filtration system on it already with a water separator. So I just needed a regulator for the gun. They say to run between 5 and 10 PSI. So I'm set at about 7, 7.5 PSI right now. We're going to go ahead and load the uh, container up with the powder coat. And we're going to get started on a piece and we'll see how it does. Alright, the powder coat I chose is from Eastwood. It's black powder with texture. I got one pound. It's called Hot Rod Black Texture. And that way, hopefully the texture of this powder coat then will match the t texture of the rock sliders on the ZR2. has a Ziploc top on the top of it. They said do not fill your gun, your bottle, more than halfway full. Because basically the air blows in and it needs to be able to stir up. Well, supposedly this stuff goes a long ways. So we're, I'm curious to see how much one pound of this is going to cover. It says on the package covers 10 to 20 square feet per half pound. And I got one pound in here, so this should cover 40 square feet. So it should go a long ways. Sounds like it's going to be a lot better than spray paint. Plus with this, if you notice there's any problems, you don't have to worry about trying to get the paint off. You just blow it off. Before you bake it, you just blow it off and then start over. All right, today's tip is how to make sure you put Teflon tape on your threads properly. It's easiest for me, I found, if I hold it in my left hand and always wrap the tape over the top. So you hold it left hand, you put the tape on, I always do two coats and tear it off. And then I like to roll it into the threads. That way your Teflon tape is always going the proper direction when you screw it in. If you run it the wrong direction, you go to screw your fitting in. If it's a right hand thread, if you go to screw it in, it starts to unwrap your Teflon tape. So hold it in your left hand, wrap over top. And that's your tip of the day. All right, prep work, they said, is very important. First thing I'm going to try this out on is my Cobalt Crescent Wrench, my Cobalt Adjustable Wrench. I cannot bake it with this tape on. They do make a high temp tape that you can use in the oven. I'm going to have to try to powder coat this and then get the tape off before I bake it. But I'm curious if how it's going to hold up on tools. If you want to powder coat, say, your wrenches or whatever, how well does it hold up under everyday use? So I'm going to try powder coating this, taking it to work, and see how it holds up. You cannot touch it with your hands. Any oils from your hands, greases, whatever, the powder won't stick to that spot. And even if it does cover, it won't stick and could, what they call fish eye, it'll spread apart as it heats up. So I sprayed this all down to get any major oils off with brake clean. Then I'm going to use wax and tar and oils remover. It removes all grease and grimes and stuff. I'm going to put that on a paper towel and I'm going to wipe it all up. I laid down plastic sheeting so when I powder coat, I don't have to worry about the, the powder getting in all the, the little nooks and crannies and crevices. If you're doing anything that has any kind of rough texture where, the, the, like, say, the paper towel might rip or something, they'd recommend using, like, a terry cloth or something. That way, when you're wiping it down, it doesn't leave pieces of towel behind. But this is fairly smooth, so I shouldn't have to worry about that. Soak the paper towel down with the remover, the prep. Eastwood and many other companies sell a different prep. I actually bought a bottle of different prep stuff, but I can't seem to figure out where the devil I put it. We've been working on cleaning out my basement, and then everything in my basement has now come out into my garage, and it's a huge mess. Can't even get a car into my garage right now. 
want to make sure you get anywhere that you want to make sure that that powder sticks. Down into little crevices and little creases. You're gonna clean it off. Make sure it's completely dry. And I'm not too terribly concerned about how this exactly turns out more than a, a customer's the steps for the ZR2 or something. You see from the paper towel, nothing else is coming off. There's no oils, no dirts. So I'm going to hang it up. Get this stuff out of the way and we can start coating. All right, you have your ground clamp. I'm going to stick to here. We'll see if this makes any contact. I stick it to the wire that's holding the wrench. There we go. Now we're getting some flow. What it does is it creates like a static electricity charge and the static charges the powder and you should always wear a dust mask but it's hard for me to do that and talk to you guys clearly because you shouldn't be breathing this stuff in. So once the powder is electronically charged it comes out and then it just wants to cling and stick to the whatever material you're powder coating. There you go. Just that simple. The whole thing's covered. Now I gotta remove all the plastic sheeting. Do not bump your piece, whatever it is that you're gonna be baking. You bake it at 400 degrees. We'll, we'll move on from there. Unfortunately, I just bumped that and put a little mark in it, but like I said, it's just a test piece anyways. All right, once your oven is in 450 degrees, you bake your piece, whatever you're powder coating, at 450 degrees, checking it every five minutes, waiting for the powder to basically start to flow and gloss. All right, it's been five minutes. Let's open up and take a look at it. Now you can see the powder is just starting to melt. So I'll leave it in a little bit longer. You can also see the spot where I bumped the powder. So now you know what happens. You can see it right up here. If you bump the powder, it obviously is not going to be covered there and it's going to leave a blemish. Like I said, this is just for a wrench for work to see how dur durable and how the texture is. If you're going to do that, if that happens to a piece you're working on, if you bump it or there's not enough coverage on a piece that you see before you put it in the oven, Hook your wire back up and do another dusting and cover that area again. All right, it's been another five minutes. Let's take a look. I don't know how well that's going to show up on camera, but you can see the whole thing. All the powder coat is a glossy color. It's kind of harder when it's a texture, but we're going to lower the oven to 400 and... Let her cook. All right, 20 minutes are up. I forgot how to turn the timer and everything off. There we go. 
since I just got this, I'm still trying to figure out how to even use the oven. So let me pull the oven rack out here. Well, there it is. I think it looks pretty decent. Like I said, it was just a test piece, so I wasn't looking for straight lines, and I bumped a spot up here and over on the other side that I'm not concerned about because, like I said, it's a test piece, and it's a wrench that I'm going to use at work. You see a piece here that I bumped. I bumped it here when I was putting it in the oven. But I'm curious to see how it's going to hold up under... Normal use at work, constant use of the hands with gloves and chemicals and that sort of thing. As always, thanks for watching Big Frogs 4x4. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell if you want to be notified of any future videos. God bless.